Diane is, is a wonderful leader. Uh, she has expanded FCNL in so many ways. I was fortunate to be part of the Friend in Washington program in uh, right before COVID. And we focused on domestic policy issues, which was something that she had, I think, wanted to expand. But I also, as part of that, I could see just what kind of leader she was. She's an inspired leader. Uh, she is grounded in Quaker truth, in her own truth. She's brave. She has courage to speak up when speaking up is the right thing to do. She's well organized. Uh, the staff really respond to her and give the most that they can. Uh, it was a transformative uh, experience for me, and I am extremely grateful to the whole organization, but to Diane in particular. When I think about Diane's legacy of leadership, I think about the DEI work that I have been doing with her, especially this last year that we've had the DEI working group. Um, and Diane has been there every step of the way and is not only contributing her own voice to the work and her own deep dedication to the work, but also sharing regularly on behalf of the staff um, and sharing what matters to the staff as we take on this work. And so that always helps me feel as though we are all in it together and that it is making a difference in terms of the work within FCNL and the power of the work that FCNL is able to accomplish. When I think of Diane's legacy of leadership at FCNL, I uh, I focus on her extraordinary ability to actualize uh, vision, uh, spiritual vision in the form of a uh, program. Uh, and uh, it, it's a remarkable ability. Uh, so, you know, we have to, uh, we can thank her for her, her work in uh, helping to form the Quaker Welcome Center, the advocacy advocacy core, the advocacy uh, teams, uh, the friends uh, place on Capitol Hill, but they're all driven by a spiritual concern, which she seemed to uh, have a particular facility to actualize. Um, and that's been a great gift to, uh, to all of us. As a person of faith, you know, I knew I wanted to do be involved in some type of ministry, but I knew that I didn't want to be a pastor or I knew that I didn't want to be preaching every Sunday, but I wanted to be, I felt called to something. And when I came to us, you know, and, and saw and met Diane and saw that you, you know, advocacy is a way of ministry really spoke to me. And I think Diane's life as well as, you know, um, I believe she grew up in the Lutheran tradition and then she came to, you know, she she found Quakerism and became a convinced friend. And it, that just resonated a lot with me because I went to a small evangelical Christian college. And I, you know, when I came to us, you know, and I learned about this theological, you know, this theological tradition, about this tradition and, you know, that there's that of God and everybody just revolutionized my theology and the way I view God and the way I, want to live out my faith. And I think Diane's life and her testimony uh, really encouraged me that, you know, this is, this is a, tr this is a way of ministry and, and this is possible. Thinking about the legacy that Diane is leaving at FCNL, I would say the increase in staff and the ability to make that much larger staff work well together. And I think there is a great sense among the staff of unity and that makes things work much better on all counts. Uh, Diane, congratulations on your tenure, uh, tenure at FCNL. The time has gone by so quickly. 
It's been such a privilege to know you. Your testimony and passion for key Quaker testimonies has been a tremendous inspiration for myself, but on a very personal level, it's also been a tremendous inspiration for both of us as it's given Sarah a chance to see uh, important Quaker principles. And it's been an introduction because she's of the Jewish faith, but there's a lot of overlap. Mm -hmm. um, I'm deeply appreciative of the long-term uh, stand to a peaceful world and that war is not the answer. Quaker testimony to resolving inequalities without resorting to conflict is memorialized by, by the Nobel Peace Prize after World War mm -hmm. II to the Friends Ambulance Service. But as a physician, my focus is on prevention and FCNL has been in a leadership position to prevent conflict, which is the key thing. We can't have a nuclear war. We need to prevent it. Um, in this era of polarization, the, a key, another key aspect that FCNL's um, had is searching for God in every person, equality, compassion, seeking the sacred of, of in all life. Your personal commitment to simplicity, integrity has been reflected by the organization the organization has strengthened to work in community values, period. Oh, again, on a personal note, I we have an employee who is an American Indian. I really appreciate FCNL's dedication to communities that are mm -hmm. underserved. Uh, another, I think, very important legacy that uh, Diane is uh, leaving with FCNL is the advocacy teams. Uh, this is a way where, uh, you know, people can write a check or, uh, you know, maybe uh, attend a program, uh, but the advocacy team gives the average citizen, FCNL supporter, uh, a real structure and focus uh, to really make a difference uh, with uh, Quaker values in Washington, D.C., and it's a really terrific organization because you put FCNL under Diane's leadership, put the staff into it to create the teams and continually support them. And, you know, I've got it on my calendar first Wednesday of the month. As an FCNL intern decades ago, FCNL really helped me shape the direction of my life. Unfortunately, after that period, I wasn't very involved. Uh, getting to know Diane and having her challenge me to bring my Quaker faith and my life experience back to FCNL has been personally rewarding. Diane's vision for big transformational changes has inspired me just as it has inspired and grown FCNL. The thing that has always impressed me the most about Diane is her ability to inspire young people. Importantly, she always understood the need to have a platform from which today's youth can do tomorrow's work. I've been blessed to be part of the capital campaign and the building advisory groups for both the Quaker Welcome Center and the Friends Place on Capitol Hill. Diane understands the need for a physical presence but more importantly, she understands that the real value is in the use and the programming of that physical space. Her vision, leadership skills, and determination ensure that these projects will create a place and a financial backing from which future generations can carry on the work of FCNL. Mm -hmm. Diane, we thank you for everything you have done, both for the organization and for many of us personally. We wish you the very best in whatever path you choose. I'll say one of the best memories I have uh, was when she came to San Francisco one time and uh, we went out to dinner at a local uh, Indian restaurant with my son, Ruben. And that was a really and, and I'm not, you know, it was not so much the dinner that I really remember. But what I really remember is that she remembered Ruben. You know, like a year or two later, you know, she asked me about him by name. 
And that's just very impressive to me that somebody is as busy as she is, who meets as many people as she does, is able to be that personal, to really be that personal with everybody that she meets. I think Diane led me to my spiritual community and uh, that she was the leader that brought me to FCNL. And um, I was so moved by my experience at annual meeting that I brought it home to my own meeting. And I stood up and I just said, hey, I'd like to start doing some lobbying work. Is there a couple of you that'd like to join me in that? And we ended up having 30 people. I was shocked at all these people that came up and said, I want to do this too. I want to do this too. And our advocacy team was born. <laughs> from that uh, and somehow my own personal experience, my own spiritual experience uh, translated into our meeting and we have been a very faithful and loyal group within our meeting in the advocacy team program. Uh, we were one of the first teams that actually to get started. And we even translated that to Jimmy Panetta, our, our elected official, <laughs> he's a big believer in FCNL also now. <laughs>